Good morning. I'm Jan Cope, Provost of the Cathedral, and it's my joy and privilege to welcome you to this service on Monday, August 31st. It's the feast day of St. Aidan, and we're worshiping this morning, coming to you from St. Mary's Chapel. Let us pray. Lord God, you've brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our scripture appointed for today is from 1 Corinthians the ninth chapter, beginning at the 16th verse. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me, and woe betide me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I'm entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation, I may make the gospel free of charge so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all so that I might win more of them. To the Jews, I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people so that I might by any means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel so that I may share in its blessings. Today is the feast day of St. Aidan, and as I will reflect a little bit later, he too, like Paul, as Paul writes in 1 Corinthians, learn to be with the people and to meet them where they were. More about that in a minute. When I was growing up in a little town in South Texas, summertime was always one of my favorite times because my mother would take my older brother and me to the public library once a week and we would check out books which we would read in the following week and repeat the pattern once a week. And it opened up, as reading does, a whole big world out there, much broader, much deeper, and also sometimes more complex than what I would experience in my own little teeny town in South Texas. And over time, I began to read biographies and autobiographies and I did so because I reasoned that there must have been something extraordinary about otherwise ordinary people to merit their having a book written about them. And what was it about their lives that could be a life lesson for me? What could I learn that might help me in my own journey and along the way? The same can be said for the saints. Have you ever wondered why we have feast days for saints going back to the early hundreds? I think it's because there was something about these otherwise ordinary people who did something extraordinary in their own time, which can be life lessons for us in our own journey of faith. What did they do? How did they live their lives that can be transformative and illuminating for you and for me in our own lives? Well, St. Aidan was one of those sorts of people. Today, we remember St. Aidan and his example, 
He died on this day in 651. You may not have ever heard of him, but here's his story. He was living in Iona. Many of us have heard of the, that sacred island. And during his time, the king of the Northumbria area had died. That area had been uh, converted to Christianity. And upon his death, the group flipped back to pagan worship. And so they wanted one of the monks from the monastery in Iona to go to see if he could bring them back to Christianity. Well, apparently the first person they sent was a miserable failure. And he came back and told the monks that those people are just too stubborn to learn or to change. And Aidan had the chutzpah to posit the view that maybe he was just too harsh, that maybe he just leaned on them too heavily to try and convert them, and perhaps there was a better and more effective way. Well, as those things go, the second that you make a suggestion, you get tagged to go implement it. And so it was with Aiden. He was sent to Northumbria to see what he might do in terms of converting the people back to Christianity. And he took a totally different approach. He was known for his gentleness. He walked amongst the people. He walked by foot from village to village. And he listened and he learned and he met people where they were. And slowly but surely, he started to nourish them with the word. And they'd gotten to know him, so they trusted him. And they began to listen. And he continued to teach and to be among them as one of them. And slowly but surely, they were drawn to this Christianity that so illuminated his life. When Aidan received gifts from royalty or wealthy people, he turned right around and provided resources for the poor. With some of the funds, he ransomed people who had been slaves and he taught them and they became priests in the church. I have to believe, looking around our world today, that there's a really important place for gentleness and humility in meeting people where they are. Because in so doing, you never know what can happen in terms of people seeing a different way and sometimes a better way. Let that be a lesson for you and for me. And I'd love to hear from you. Who are some of the saints that illumine your life and why? What have you learned from their lives that has made a difference in your own? If you care to share with me, you can write to me at provost at cathedral.org. I'd love to hear your stories. Amen. And now let us pray in the words our Savior Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O God, our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble, we pray for all those affected by the coronavirus around the world, for the leaders of the nations that they may work together for the common good, give public health and government officials the strength and will to act with wisdom and compassion in service to all. Remove the presence of fear and anxiety from our hearts and heal all those who are sick with the virus. Give skill, sympathy, and resilience 
to all who are caring for the sick, and your wisdom to those searching for a cure. Strengthen them with your spirit that through their work, many will be restored to health. All these things we pray in Christ's name. Amen. O oh, loving God, you called your servant Aidan from the cloister to reestablish the Christian mission in Northern England. Grant that we, following his example, may use what you have given us for the relief of human need and may persevere in commending the saving gospel of our Redeemer, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace this day and always. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>